Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be continuing on with the first person player porn series by cleaning up a lot of stuff, optimizing a lot of other stuff, and uh, addressing a couple of things that's been brought to my attention. For one, first of all, uh, the the uh, aim down sight reticle for the AK wasn't centered properly at the end of my last video, but now it is perfectly firing right at the tip of that middle line in the iron sight there. And all that took which is a little bit of tweaking of these values, which I'll show on screen here. So I just changed the, the Z rotation and uh, the, the uh, Y position a little bit, adjusted the, the Z height as well. These are, these are the figures that you would tweak in order to make the, the aim down sight uh, positioning work quite well. But it has brought something else to my attention. If we hit play, if I fire with just the crosshair, the bullets are landing a little bit, a little bit up from the, uh, from the horizontal crosshair there. So the way that you would fix that is either by uh, mucking about in the crosshair HUD, which I wouldn't recommend because the crosshair is perfectly dead center. Instead, open up your weapon blueprints. That's the wrong one. That's the base. Where am I? The AK. Or, well, both weapons, really. You probably have to make this change with both of them. And by manipulating the start position of the uh, of your, your camera shot. By, so here's your start position. All you need to do is just have a vector plus vector and then just adjust these values here before plugging it into the start position. And you could even save this as a variable if you want. Uh, we can call this one, we'll call this aim offset and then adjust this variable uh, once we compile it. Where am I? There we go, over here in the right. So if we minus like 0 0.5 say and then hit go, See, we can we can steadily bring it down and uh in fact let's drop down a little bit further see what happens i think that's actually moving upwards so oh yeah we have to use a negative <laughs> minus two so yeah we, we can adjust our adjust our shot uh in that way so i hope that's uh clear to you guys and without further ado let's move on the other thing that i wanted to address is the well, the, the clutter, basically, a lot of this uh, this noise here, because we got some functionality that's in our player that should be in the weapon, and vice versa. There was a comment in my last video, or the, the one before, it said that it was a terrible way to do things because you can't change the weapons, so they're not, they're not dynamic, they're kind of hard-coded into the pawn. And uh, he was totally right. So what we're going to do today, as well as uh, clean up a lot of this other stuff, is to make our weapon system a bit more dynamic, uh, a bit more you know workable for what it is we're trying to achieve. So let's add a component here. We're going to make a child actor, call this one gun, and this will be a child of our mesh. So go back to our viewport, reset our uh, values here, make the parent socket our palm, palm underscore r. We'll save that, and the child actor class that we want is our weapon base, our base weapon blueprint. And you can see here, so now it's just gone and added our uh, weapon base, which if you remember from the start, the default static mesh that we got in our weapon base is the uh, AK. So we can just see this in our player pawn and uh, be able to, to manipulate it uh, like that, like adjust it if we need to resize it, that kind of thing. So with that done, we're going to be from this point forward using our gun child actor as our weapons and uh, deleting our, our variables a bit later on. And speaking of, there's a lot here that we're not using because I've cut down our, our player controls to the bare minimum. We don't need gun offset, base turn rate, look up right weapon range weapon damage our start trace our end trace or our shooting direction so we're just going to cut all this down we don't need this function here this get player viewpoint either all right so that sort of that really cleans up our variable tab here the next thing to do is to we'll add some some of this functionality back to our weapon so we'll start with the ak go to our event graph here and we'll just have a close look at what we're doing for example when we fire uh we'll start with shooting so what we're doing here is we're checking for the ammo in our uh, player, but we're also checking for our ammo in the weapon. Obviously not ideal, because we only want to be making these checks just once. Uh, like the reason that it was done this way, by the way, was just, uh, it's, it's a proof of concept, is to show you guys the basic functionality, and then we're, we're moving on from there. So now we're gonna clean all of this up and uh, get it all done. So let's just delete this check, and uh, we'll hook this back up for the time being, I suppose. It's not gonna necessarily matter if it's not there at all. And then back in our weapon. So what we're doing here is we're getting our aim down sight and our mesh 1P and then playing our montage. So in our fire, uh, where can we do this, do we think? We'll do it after our muzzle flash. Actually, we'll do it before our muzzle flash. Um, by the way, if you don't see a, 
a return node, like an exit from this muzzle flash. If we open this up, drag our execute onto our output here, we'll get our we'll get our exit. And then when we compile, go back to our event graph, you can see that it's now got a got an exit. But anyway, we'll do this before the muzzle flash. Because there's things to do with timing in the muzzle flash, which we might want to want to skip over. So what we need to do is cast to our actually we'll just do it this way. We'll get the player character. Get the player character. Uh, and then cast to FPS pawn. Make sure that we set this to a pure cast. Plug this into our object, and then we can use this to get some of the variables out of our uh, out of our main player pawn. So let's uh, we'll go back to our FPS pawn here. Let's just copy all of this. Just Control C. Get back to our weapon. Control V. And then so this aim down sight and this mesh one P aren't going to work just as they are. But if we come out of this as FPS pawn BP. Let's get our aim down sight, and we'll also get our mesh 1p, which will be here, yeah, get mesh 1p. So our aim down sight is going to be the condition of our branch, which we'll plug in here. And our mesh 1p is going to be the skeletal mesh component for both of our montages. And then our, both of our montages here are going to go into our muzzle flash macro. So depending on whether we are aim down sight, we'll be playing the different arm animations and then going into our muzzle flash. Pretty straightforward stuff. This should uh, should make sense to you guys. Just uh, organize things here. All right, with that done, we can go back to our FPS pawn and just delete this from our tree. So now all we're doing is getting the primary weapon and using the, the fire event. Next thing is to, well, we'll do the same thing with the Glock. Uh, so yeah, we'll delete this check. We'll copy this and I'll go back to my Glock weapon and do the same thing. So I'll paste that in. Hook it up, connect it to the muzzle flash, and I'll also go to my AK and copy copy these notes just for the sake of time. There we go. So aim down sight. Then our mesh one P goes into the skeletal mesh component, and we can delete these extraneous uh, values here. So we power that. It all works fine because it's all going to work fine. And then save it. And of course, because uh, we haven't really changed any of our variables yet, this should still work as intended. Ah, so we're not switching weapon with our two button. I wonder why that is. Ah, I, I know why it is. So it is changing. The problem is that we got this gun here. Um, we'll set this to invisible. <laughs> so we're not seeing it at the moment. So when we hit play, there's our handgun. So with the current setup here, having cut down our firing, it's all working as intended, as it did uh, before we made any changes. The next thing to do is this equipped weapon um, our equipped weapon boolean here, which we're not going to use. Although, actually, before we do that, we'll do our reloading. So we want to get our our reloading uh, blueprint here into our weapons. So let's just let's see. We will copy. We'll copy all of this. Um, well, we'll do this. We'll do this in order. Let's see. What do we need to do? Well, for starters, let's just copy all of it. Just control C, we'll come back to our AK weapon here, we'll paste it all in, and we're gonna get a lot of errors. For one, we're calling an event that's already in the in the uh in the weapon here, so we're not gonna need that. Um we are gonna need things such as our ammo count and max ammo. We'll just get the we'll just re-get these these nodes here. Uh there we go, ammo count and max ammo. So they don't have that uh, that target call there. Let me position these back in. We'll keep moving up the line. All right, so we've got our mesh 1P and our is reloading. So we can use our cast from earlier. Let's grab that. We'll grab the mesh 1P as well. Duplicate them, bring them down here. And I'll plug in the result of this mesh 1P into the anim instance node there. And then we can delete that. And then out of our cast, let's set is reloading. Set is reloading. And we'll delete that. Why is that not? Ah, oh, there we go. What are we setting? So yeah, we don't need the success. We just need to set our is reloading to true. And connect this up to our tree. Now, what's next? Okay, so we need our reload time. Let's get our reload time. We'll add that as a delay. And remember that our reload event occurred uh, right here. So we need to get this stuff. 
and just move it into our into our uh, blueprint here. So let's move this down. There we go. Hook this all up. Got our reload time set fine. We only need the one delay, surely. So yeah, we'll delete we'll delete this delay and then have our set reloading set back to true. Although that's the wrong uh, set reloading node. We'll grab this one, get that, plug it into our cast, and put this one at the end of our tree. And then connect this up to our, to our little node there. So we compile that, should all work fine. And then put our reload, our event reload, at the start. And then when we compile it, we shouldn't get any errors. So this was our AK. So let's hit play and we'll test out to see if our new reload code works as intended. All right, so what is next? Um, see, where are we playing our sounds? Our sounds should all be good. Nothing's really changing there. But then back in the, well, we'll do the same thing for the Glock. So let's grab uh, all of this. We'll grab our entire reload uh, event here and we'll just drop it into our um, Glock. All of this code should work just as is because we're not changing, you know, we're not changing anything. All of these variables should be the same for the same, uh, the same child blueprint. So this all should work as intended. So let's compile, hit save, and we'll see if it works. Ah, so it's still playing the uh, arms AK reload. What we need is the arms clock reload and in montage. All right, cool. We'll compile that, just have to have a quick check. Perfect, although our sound stops working after the first time. We'll investigate that a little bit later. Uh, for the meantime, we can move on. So let's go back to our FPS pawn. We can get rid of all of this. So we'll kill all that except for our reload event call. There we go. With all that deleted, we'll just move this straight up. And we'll get back to this because we're not gonna need the primary weapon or the secondary weapon uh, uh, variables here. We're sort of working on on getting rid of them. Now, we're not gonna need to do anything with, well, there's our equipped, our equipped weapon boolean, which we can change. So let's start by, well, we'll add a new variable here. We're gonna call it uh, weapon equipped. And it's going to be, we'll compile that, it's going to be an integer. Compile that again, our default will be at zero. And over here is where we'll uh, handle it at our weapon switching switching blueprints. So when we are not reloading, let's we'll grab our weapon equipped here. We want to switch, switch on int, just like that. So every time this fires, it's going to change depending on uh, what, um, what integer it is that we're working with. So let's just make a little bit more space here. I'm gonna move my aim down sight controls away for a bit and make ourselves a bit of space over here. We're not gonna need these two booleans. Uh, we will need another one of these switch on int. And we're also gonna to need to set our weapon equipped. So for our AK, that's our one slot. We'll just keep it at weapon equipped is one. Oh, we don't need true, we want false. And then plug in our false. And when, there we go, duplicated it. And when our weapon is the Glock, we'll set our weapon to one. Because the first, the first integer in our set is going to be zero and the second one is going to be one. If we can, okay, so we can plug this into both. Uh, both of our sets. And then we'll just add two pins here, uh, a, one, a zero and a one, and then change our child class based on whichever one it is. So let's delete all of this, delete our primary secondary weapon script here, and let's make our gun visible again. Visible. And then we'll just grab our gun here. Uh, we'll get, get our child actor, and then we can set where is it set our, oh wait, we have to cast, cast to our weapon base, cast to weapon base BP, because this gun here, if we uh, look at our details again, the child actor class that we're dealing with is the weapon base uh, blueprint. So when I cast that blueprint and then set it, let's just make this a pure, pure cast. And as our weapon base BP, let's set, set our child actor. Now I've done something wrong here. Um, We'll keep this because we'll use this in a little bit, but out of our gun, set our child actor class. All right, got there on the end. So with zero, it's going to be our AK. And when it's one, it's going to be our Glock. 
and then our target is the gun and then we'll just hook this up compile and that should work just fine so let's get our uh, let's disconnect our begin play because we're about to delete uh, all of this we're not going to need it from this point forward i don't think let's compile that hit save open it up again and it's not working uh huh, we forgot to hook up our, our weapon equipped here into our selection okay compile that save there we go so we're, we're changing our gun you can kind of see the glock down there in the in the bottom there <laughs> so the, the class is changing we're getting a lot of errors here these are all to do with the hud uh we'll be able to fix that uh in a second for now though let's just go back to our world settings here and we'll just uh remove the hud going forward because we'll handle that at the end so here in our where are we, in our fps pawn so we're switching our gun just fine but we're not uh, not getting our animation set properly. Oh, and we can delete the, the begin play. We'll get rid of that. And what else are we using here? Okay, so here's our primary and our secondary weapon. Let's grab in our gun. And we want to uh, get our child actor. Then passed to our weapon base. Pass to our weapon base blueprint. Convert this back to a pure, pure cast. And then this will be our fire. Uh, in our fire event. So we can delete our primary weapon there. And I might just duplicate this for simplicity. Delete. Oh, actually, we're not going to need to do any of that. Let's delete all this. We should just need to use this one uh, this one cast here. So when we press fire, we'll just cast our event and it should be able to shoot. So we'll compile that, save it, hit play. All right, we're shooting just fine. When we hit two, we're also shooting just fine, but we're not getting our uh, hand animations working properly. But that's okay, we can fix that too. And where are we? So reloading was next. We'll do reloading in much the same way. Let's grab our cast here, duplicate that, hook this up to our reload event, which should be the same. You can see it here, target is weapon-based BP, and we're casting to the weapon-based BP, which means that uh, it should work just fine. Because remember, this primary weapon and secondary weapon variables are both uh, children of the uh, of the weapon based blueprint. So we'll compile that, save it, we'll have a quick test to see how the reloading works. Working well for the AK, but we we can't switch to our Glock for some reason. Let's just have a quick look here. I'll make sure that our variables are working fine. I don't imagine why there'd be any problems. Uh, ah, yeah, we have to set our reloading to false. I don't know why that was set to true. Oh yeah, it was probably because I just copied them over. Forgot to set our reloads to false. All right, so we'll compile both of those and we'll have another quick test. Oh, what's up? There we go. So AK reloads fine. We switch to our Glock and our Glock reloads fine as well. The only issue is that we're not, uh, we're not getting our arms to be the, the right animation. Um, let's see, how would we fix that? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, it's because we're not using the Boolean anymore for our weapon switching. So let's go to our uh, animations folder, uh, which is over here. We want to open up our arms blueprint. Let's wait for that to load. And then head over to our event graph. And see here, we've got our equipped weapon stored as a uh, Boolean here. We don't need that at all. What we need is to get our integer back. So let's uh, we'll kill our weapon switch here. And that's totally fine. Make ourselves a new variable. Uh, we'll call this equip weapon. Oh, actually, we'll call it weapon switch like it was before. There we go. And it's going to be an integer. And from our casted character, let's get uh, get weapon equipped. This will be our integer. And then we'll just set this right here. This, of course, changes our functionality over in the animation graph because we're using uh, we were using our equip weapon boolean to change which weapon we were carrying. And we've got an integer now, so we're not gonna to need to do that. Uh, we'll delete this blend pose by bool here and make ourselves a blend, blend pose by int. There we go. All right, we've already got two blend poses, but this is handy because we can keep making more and more uh, like different arms, arm settings here and keep adding more and more poses here. If we right click this, we can go down here to add blend pin and we can add more and more if, if we need them, if we want. So let's just grab our weapon switch here, control drag for a get, plug this into our active child index, and then just hook this back up. So remembering that zero is gonna be our AK, one is gonna be our Glock. We'll plug this into our default slot, 
and I like keeping things all neat and tidy, so I'll just move this around. There we go. So we'll compile that and save it. And just to double check, so we've got our weapon equipped integer from our caster character and replaced it with the boolean that we were using before. So this is going to replace the functionality that that boolean added. When we hit play, the weapon switching is working perfectly. Look at that. Nicely done. All right, so let's head back to our pawn. We'll see what else we can change. Uh, I'll just get rid of this. Um, there's a set. Let's delete. Oh, I did. I don't know why I deleted that. This back up. Get our Glock back. Okay. And this is also going to be how we, uh, how we handle, for example, dropping and picking up weapons in the future. We'll be able to just use this gun here and set the child class to basically anything we want from anywhere we want. For this particular example though, we're just going to assume that we're carrying an AK and a Glock. But at this point, that no longer matters. We're not using our primary or our secondary weapon uh, variables. I'm just going to delete them just to prove a point. We are now using much, much more efficient, much more dynamic uh, mechanics here. And now, for example, like when we, uh, when we um, like pick up a new gun, say we can compare it to, or when we drop our gun, you know, we can just we can just uh, change this uh, zero value here for whichever one that we dropped, that kind of thing. I'll cover it in a future video. So we're not going to have to change the aim down sight mechanics at all, uh, but we've really cut down on our uh, clutter here. I'm uh, pretty happy with this, pretty happy with progress here. We've very much simplified all of these things. So the only thing left to do is to correct up the HUD, to change our, our um, HUD elements so that they're casting properly and getting the, the data that we need. So back in our editor, let's get our HUD back. That's our FPS underscore HUD. And then open up our ammo health underscore HUD. Oh, it's already, okay. So it's already found a whole bunch of errors. Let's head to the graph. Uh, where I, so this is the max ammo uh, function, text function. And there's a lot here that we're not gonna need. Like we're not gonna need, well, any of that. We're not gonna need that. And we're not gonna need this return node. All we're gonna need to do is from our FPS pawn here, let's get our gun get gun, get the child actor, and then uh, cast to our weapon base BP. So we'll uh, convert this to a pure cast. And then as our weapon base BP, we'll plug this into our max ammo where the, uh, where the last one was plugged in. So let's organize all this. It might look a little weird using two casts like this, but it's going to work exactly perfectly. Right, I'll just adjust things here so that they make a little more sense. And then we hook up our return node. Saves a bit more space, so let's uh, compile that. Okay, so we still got some problems. The other one is our current ammo. Uh, I'm just going to grab these casting nodes, go back to our current ammo, paste that there, and then delete all of this junk that we don't need. All of that can go. The extra return node can go. And now from our caster weapon base, we'll just plug this into ammo count, and then hook up our return node, hit compile, and we get a nice big tick. Uh, which means that this all should work just fine. So we'll hit play. All right, so our AK works properly. When we switch to the Glock, our Glock works properly as well. And this also fixes the problem. Like I mentioned at the end of my last video that, uh, where's one of my weapons, working the AK back up, that when we were firing the gun, uh, we were checking for the ammo before we were playing the arms animation. So therefore, the last bullet in the clip it wouldn't register with the arms, but this this uh, updated system here fixes all that. We're only making the one check to ammo, and uh, then doing all of our calculation here in the weapon. So the only thing that needs to be done in the uh, in the player pawn is to just cast to our weapon and then fire off the event. Very simple, uh, much much more efficient, much more well optimized, and uh, look at that, so much more compact. Ah, oh, love it. Don't have any of that redundant, you know, doubled up blueprints here sitting in the sitting in the player. And I think that's about uh, I think that's about it. I can't think of anything else that we can uh, tweak or optimize here. And as you can see, uh, the functionality of our system is exactly the same as it was before, but now it's much much more uh, you know much much more efficient. The only thing is the sound effects, which stop firing after the after the reload. So one thing we can do to speed it up and maybe fix that issue is if we just skip this branch here, this is reloading branch, it'll save us a cast and I'll do the same thing in the Glock. 
Uh, where's our ammo check? Here we go. So we'll skip over this branch here with our is reloading uh, variable call. Save that. Head back to our pawn. And then when we hit R, we'll just control drag to get a get. B and click to get a branch. And we'll just make that check here. So if reloading is false, then we get to reload, not while we're reloading. <laughs> All right, so that should uh, fix up that problem. So let's compile and save. You know what? We'll uh, we'll do the same thing here with the with the fire. So we'll just duplicate this branch, move this out a bit. So if we are not reloading, then we can shoot. That should uh, save us a little bit of little bit of uh, calculation there. All right. So let's compile that, save it, and let's just have another final look. So hit play. So we're firing properly, reloading nicely. So the sounds keep going now, I guess that's something. We'll reload a Glock here. All right, now that's all working exactly as intended. So this is about as far as we go with uh, this particular video. We've made this code so much more efficient, cut down to the number of casts we're doing, cut down to the number of calculations, and we've even gone and adapted our gun system so that we can set our child class based on whatever we want and uh, not be reliant on these hard-coded variables, which was a point of criticism in uh, one of my previous comment sections. So I hope that's been addressed. I hope that's all been resolved. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, this is it, guys. So I will catch you in the next video. Cheers.